in the gymnasium here at the Centertopia Church of Christ. We're grateful for that. And we have uh, meetings here every Tuesday and Thursday uh, starting at 6 o'clock uh, with, ex with the exception of a few, which is tonight is one of the exceptions. exceptions. And we also meet here every Sunday morning from 9 to 11. So if you're ever in our area, we would invite you to come on down. We've got, we got a lot of good seating in here. Uh, a lot of space, and we got a chair spaced out real good. But uh, what we want to do, uh, and we, we're trying to get some DVDs made, so um, the name of our presentation, as always, is the Living Branches, Method of the Coaches, the Game Changer. He's the buying, we're the branches, and we want to produce some good fruit for the Lord. So we grow by our willingness to face and rectify mistakes or errors and convert them into assets. And we're going to talk tonight, we're going to be talking about the power of our assets uh, and which come from our instincts. We're going to be talking about the power of our instincts that are either going to be used as an asset or liabilities. So we're going to open our presentation in the usual manner with a moment of silence followed by the serenity prayer. Serenity prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thy will, not mine, be done. And I want to say this about thy will, not mine, be done. A lot of times when we operate on instincts, we're operating in self-will, and we're not being led by the Spirit. So... We're going to go to our, and there again, uh, we're going to start in Jude 16 through 25. It's going to be the central uh, topic tonight. We're going to talk about temptation, traps, training, and uh, learning how to sidestep the traps and trying to stay focused. So we got self centered question versus God centered. Self centered, the misuse of our instincts become liabilities. And the last four letters in liabilities is T-I-E-S. So the enemy ties us up and entangles us, I believe, through the misuse of our God-given instincts. So the proper use of our instincts, they become our assets. So we got the liabilities and the assets uh, through the instincts. And we want to learn how to be faithful. We want to use our our instincts, the way God created them to be. Creation gave us instinct for a purpose, and without them, we wouldn't be human beings. So, we're going to start off with a, a few questions. What kind of harm do people do one another? We're going to start off with some uh, self-examination questions and, and, and some self-searching questions. To define the word harm, in a practical way, we might call it the results of instincts in collision, which cause physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual damage to people. How many of y'all let the instincts inside you collide with the instincts inside somebody else? Or somebody else's instincts collide with us? And when that happens, no peace can be had. Whenever a human being becomes a battlefield, for the instincts, there can be no peace. So if we're in that battlefield, we're in the battlefield of the devil. And that's what he that's the battlefield he wants us to be in without being led by the spirit. How many times do your instincts get threatened and your emotions get defensive? You understand what I'm talking about? How many times does our instincts get threatened? Our sexual instinct, our security instinct, and our social instinct. Those are the three basic instincts that we're talking about. We want to find exactly how, when, and where our natural desires that come from our instincts have warped us. How many times did we let those natural desires lure us into maybe a bar, maybe a beer joint, 
maybe someplace where we shouldn't have went and we got an unhealthy fellowship that led to unhealthy relationships that led to broken and twisted relations. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? There's very few people that haven't been led in one of those joints in some shape, form, or fashion by the devil through somebody else. And we let those natural desires start, or those instincts ruling and dominating our life. How many of y'all believe that you can let the instincts, how many of y'all believe that those instincts so necessary for our existence often far exceed their intended purpose? A lot of times powerfully, blindly, many times subtly, they drive us, dominate us, and insist on ruling our life. And when we do that, when we misuse them, we're letting the devil have power over our life. That's what I believe with all my heart. Since most of us are born, we're born in the natural. We were given God-given instincts. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires that come from the instincts, it isn't strange that we often let them, let these, meaning the natural desires that come from the instinct, far exceed the intended purpose. And how many of us were so unaware of that as we were growing up, especially in our teenage years? And then we got in our rolling 20s and the list goes on. But whatever the case may be, y'all think about how many times we let those natural desires far exceed their intended purpose. And how many times do we let those natural desires drive us blindly, worldly-minded, spiritually blinded? When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they, meaning the natural desires that come through the instincts, supply us with more satisfaction or pleasure than are possible or do us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth. So how many times, y'all remember that song that says, I can't get no satisfaction but i try but i try but i can't get no y'all understand that song y'all about that other song says looking for love in all the wrong places y'all know about that song y'all know i can't sing but y'all get the point you understand so as god's people we want to recognize and eliminate the things that causes divisions how many of y'all want to be used by the devil to cause divisions, to create barriers between your family, to create barriers between your friends, to create barriers between society as a whole? How many of y'all want to be used that way as an instrument for the devil? I tell you, I don't want to be one of them, okay? But I tell you this, I have been one of them, and I can still be one of them. You understand what I'm saying? These people are grumblers. This is this is Jude 16 right here. These people are grumblers and complainers, living only to satisfy their natural desires. They brag loudly about themselves. Y'all know anybody that just boasts about themselves, about what they've done? And how I many y'all? Been around people that just boasted about all the perverted behavior they've done. Any y'all ever been behind? Any of y'all ever listened to somebody just boast and brag about all the how many times they've been in jail and and how many times that women they've been with or or how many men they've been with or whatever the case may be. Y'all know anybody that boasts and brag about all that stuff and brag loudly about themselves? And then they flatter others to get what they want, which is nothing but manipulation. And the hearts aren't right and the motives aren't right. And they have no idea, I don't believe, that they are being used by the devil to fulfill his purpose, to steal, kill, and destroy. But you, my dear friends, it's talking about the body of Christ, okay? You, my dear friends, must remember what the apostles of the Lord Jesus predicted. I mean, y'all believe that their prediction was right when they said they told you that in the last times, how I many y'all believe that every day that goes by, we one day closer 
to D-Day coming. Whether we die in the natural or whether Jesus comes back and gets us. But in the last days, in the last times, there would be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy the ungodly desires. How many of y'all believe that there are people in this world that are living only to satisfy their ungodly desires and have no idea that they are letting the devil be in the ruler and the controller of their life? These people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. How many of y'all been used to cause divisions in your family? How many of y'all been used by the devil to cause divisions in your friends? How many of your family members have been used to cause divisions in your family? How many friends have been used by the devil to cause divisions in people's life? How many of y'all believe that society as a whole is being used today to cause divisions everywhere? And everybody's blaming everybody. Y'all y'all understand that? Everybody's blaming everybody for what is going on in life today. And the truth of the matter is, as long as we're blaming other people, instead of being responsible for our own actions, we will be a victim of the nature of darkness. So, it says, they follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit in them. Now I'm going to say this. This is what I believe. I believe you can have God's spirit in you. But it can be blotted out. Or the consciousness of his spirit can be blotted out. And you can be misled. And get on the wrong track. And start following those instincts. And let those instincts. And those natural desires. Lead you down the path of destruction. And you start destroying your life from the inside out and then be used to destroy other people's life from the inside out with our actions and our words. How many of y'all believe that? I believe that with all my heart. But you, dear friends, must build each other up. How many of y'all are used to tear each other down? How many of us get used to tear other people down with our words and actions? But what we want to do is start building each other up in your most holy faith. So that goes back to what or who are you putting your faith in? Quality faith versus quantity faith. And our faith is supposed to be in God alone. Y'all, this world's not our home. We're just passing through. And every day that goes by, we one day closer to D-Day. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we want to use self-examination, meditation, prayer, self-searching to the known self be true and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ who will bring you eternal life. In this way, if we start doing all this, and we don't want to be a part of this, in this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love. How many of y'all want to be safe in the arms of God? How many of y'all want to have that shield of protection around you? And walk in love. And look for ways to encourage each other. You must show mercy to those whose faith are wavering. How many of us condemn people whose faith is wavering instead of showing mercy? The Bible says in James 2.13 says, Mercy triumphs over judgments. You know what Romans 9.15 says? I will have mercy on whom I'll have mercy, and I'll have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. You know what I, what that means to me? That ain't none of your business, boy. In Romans 14, uh, 4 says, God says, Who are you, O man, to judge another man's servant? To his own master he will stand or fall, and God shall make him stand. And our job is, is not to be judged here in executioner. James chapter 4 warns us about to be in the judge. Said our job is to love. It's God's job to judge. It says rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to steal others. But do so with great caution. Now here's a warning. Here's a warning. 
hating the sin that contaminates their life. You know how many people hate people and don't hate the sin, but hate the person? Now, who wants us to hate the person? i tell you this, it's not God. God loves righteousness. Hebrews 1, 9 says, God loves righteousness and he hates. He hates that sinful nature. He hates that nature. He hates wickedness. Y'all look at it. God loves righteousness and God hates <laughs> wickedness. But God loved his creation. How many of y'all believe God loved his creation? How many of y'all believe in God's sight all human beings are important? Y'all know the little song we used to sing when we were a kid? Red, yellow, black, or white. They are precious in his sight. You know why? Because God created every man, woman, and color. Every man, woman, and child regardless of race, creed, or color. He created us all in the likeness and image of him. And he wants us to grow in his image. He wants us to grow in his likeness. And that should be the quest for all of God's people. Our search for, our quest to grow in the likeness and image of our creator. And it says, now all, now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away. How I many of y'all believe it? No temptation has seized you other than what is common to man. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that no temptation has seized you other than what is common to man. But God is faithful. He will always provide a way out. So who provides a way out? God does. Who provides a way into that captivity? The devil does. How did he do it? Through the misuse of every good thing that God gives us. Now glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. Now, I want y'all to think about that. How many of y'all want to be brought before the Lord without a single fault? You know why we can do that? By means of Christ Jesus, through the blood. What God did for us through Christ Jesus. And the Bible says in Psalms 103, as far as the east is to the west, God will remove, remove our iniquities and remember them no more. And it also says in Colossians 1, uh, like 13 through 22 or 23, that we're going to get to stand before God without a single fault. How many of y'all believe it would be good if we would stop fault finding on everybody, stop grumbling, stop complaining? All glory to Him who alone is God, our Savior, to Jesus Christ our Lord, all glory, majesty, and power and authority are his before all time, in the present, and beyond all time. Jude 25. So our scripture was Jude 16 through 25. And the Bible says it in, in, uh, in uh, 1 Peter 5 verse 8. Be self-controlled or be sober-minded. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. And I'm going to suggest that he wants to devour us through those natural desires that we misuse and through those God-given instincts that we misuse. And he devours us from the inside out by the misuse of our God-given instincts. So many people are searching for answers that will aid them to be set free so they can start using their instincts the way they were created to be. And so, and uh, so many people are searching for the answers, but they don't know what the questions are. So we're gonna have a little series of questions that hopefully will help us get some answers. And the principal means that we're gonna use is self-examination. In other words, start taking your own inventory and start concentrating on what you ought to be doing or not be doing instead of focusing on what other people are doing or not doing. How many of us are guilty of focusing on what other people are doing or not doing and become grumblers, complainers, and fault finders? How many of us are guilty of doing that? And here's the deal. In the world about us, you hear it in everyday talk, man. People are grumbling and complaining about what what's going on at the White House, what's going on in the governor's office. And truth of the matter is, 
we have no idea what's going on up there because we're not there and we have about that much information and a lot of that information is given over the over the TV or over the radio. So how many of y'all believe that inadequate information leads to um, uninformed people? Y'all believe that? And uninformed people can't be transformed until we get informed about the truth. We need all the facts before we can make a solid judgment. So we're going to do a little self-examination, a little self-searching, a little meditation, a little praying, and we're going to ask a few questions to thine own self be true. Hopefully the ball and slide will help us start taking our own inventory and help us to correct what's wrong. How many of us, how many of us are in a habit of taking our own inventory and not in a habit of uh, how many of us in a habit of taking everybody else's inventory? Just focusing on what everybody ought to be doing, focusing on what other other people um, uh, are doing, or, or, and not focusing on what we need to be doing. You understand what I'm talking about? Learning how to break the old unhealthy habit and develop new ones. How many of y'all believe grumbling, complaining, and fault finding is a very unhealthy habit because according to what we just read, it's causing the divisions in the family. Not just in our immediate family, but it's causing divisions in the family of God. How many of y'all believe that grumblers, complainers, and fault finders? How many of y'all believe that people complain about the leadership at, at whatever church you're in? Or, or people complain about a member of the, of the church that's, that's got weak in their faith. And instead of aiding and trying to bring them back in... Uh, we just grumble and complain and start gossiping and start slandering them. And any of y'all know anything about what I'm talking about? I know you do. What do you? I'm gonna ask you some personal questions now. At the core, this is personal and simple. What do you grumble about? How many of y'all been grumbling today? Y'all been grumbling today? Ain't y'all guilty? Anybody in here besides me grumbled a little bit today? What you been complaining about today? Maybe it's because you didn't get what you want when you wanted on your terms and on order. How many of us let them expectations get out of whack and we start demanding our own way and then we get bent out of shape and tore up from the floor up when we don't get what we want when we want it? So how... What do you grumble about? What do you complain about? Is that a good self-searching question? Is that a good self-examination question? How long or how often have you grumbled? How long have you been grumbling? How many of y'all been grumbling? How many of y'all been complaining? And how many of y'all been a fault finder ever since you was a little bitty child? And you developed an unhealthy habit. Because you heard other people grumbling and complaining or fault finding. Like a little kid in a candy store grumbles and complains. But mama, why can't I have it? You understand like that? A lot of times in grown up bodies, we act like a little kid that don't get what they want when they want it and how they want it. How often have you or do you misuse your God given instincts? In other words, how many times have you missed that, misused that instinct right there? Just food for thought. Just reflect back on it. Or maybe you didn't misuse it in the way that somebody else did. And you got caught up in the comparing business and you said, at least I didn't do that. Or I never would have done that. Well, how many times did you think about doing it, whether you did it or not? Y'all understand what I'm talking about? The security instinct. What or who do you put your faith in? So many people put their faith in that almighty dollar. Or somebody put their faith in, in somebody else, a human being. And you know what? Human beings, human beings are going to fail us because we are human. But God will never let you down. Our Heavenly Father will never let us down. So, what about the social instinct? How many of y'all wanted to be somebody when you were growing up? I wanted to be a football coach. I wanted to be a football player. I was supposed to play football out here at Northwest Junior College, but I got sidetracked. 
Now I get to be a coach. I've been going to jail since 1996 in training. I've been going to treatment center since 1997 in training. I didn't know all this then, but I know it now. I've been going to prison since 1999 in training. Okay, I've already been to a couple of meetings and uh, Bob, uh, my buddy Bob Corner and I did a did this meeting at a treatment center not too far from here up the road. And and, uh, and and we received, and other people received, and people saw what we were doing and what we are talking about. How often do we focus on what others are doing? How many of us focus on whatever others are doing? How many of us focus on what other people are doing that they shouldn't be doing? Y'all understand what I'm talking about? How many of us get caught up in that trap? And then when we do that, how many of y'all believe that the misuse of these instincts is tearing families apart. People are getting divorced like it. You know why? It's because those demands and those expectations and those instinctual needs aren't being met as we see it to our way of thinking. Does that make sense? What role does expectations of the man play in broken, twisted relations? We never expected this to happen and it happened. Or we expected something else to happen and it didn't happen. And then when that happens, we get offended. And a lot of times when we get offended, we, we don't just get angry, we get very angry. And the next thing you know, we got a resentment against whoever or whatever, and we develop a grudge against whoever or whatever because of the misuse of all this God-given stuff. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. James 1.17 And the devil wants us to misuse all our gifts and all our talent to fulfill whatever we think is important, our priorities, our ambitions, our objectives, our goals, our values, our motives, our desires. Whatever we think is valuable to us, the truth of the matter is, we came from dust and we're going to go back to the dust. This world's not our home. We're just passing through. Yesterday's gone. We don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow or not, but what we want to do is try to do a good job of living today. And if tomorrow comes for us, then we'll do a good job when it arrives so there's no need to worry about it, okay? The Bible says in Matthew 6, 34, don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Today's got enough troubles of its own. So how many bears exist because of your words or actions? You think about that. How many people have you wounded with the misuse of those natural desires or the misuse of those instincts? And how many words have come out of your mouth that have wounded somebody and the person that, that, that you hurt didn't have nothing to do with your pain, but you had that pain and those wounds, those emotional wounds stored up inside you. So how many barriers exist because of your words or your actions? Try to forget somebody else's words and actions. Start focusing on your own spiritual demonstration. In other words, how many, how many people, how much damage have we left in our way? What kind of emotional wounds exist because of our words and our actions? How many twisted, broken relations exist and because of our words or our actions? So how often do we let new events throw us off balance and tempt us to make mistakes? Expectation. Our security gets threatened. Our social status gets threatened. How often do we let old offenses or old events keep us from enjoying life today? How many of us how many of us let those old offenses just keep uh, festering and just driving us crazy? We get that. We'll get to anybody besides me. Get back and start doing that instant replay, and we do that instant replay, and we do that instant replay, and we start living in that instant replay. Any of y'all know what I'm talking about? Just like just like watching a football game. Old events keep us from enjoying life. How many of y'all believe? that God wants us to insist on enjoying life, the new life, fuller life, happier life. How well do we practice self-restraint 
in all these situations. How many of y'all believe that self-restraint when it comes to the natural desires, when it comes to them God giving instincts, how many of y'all believe that self-restraint should be practiced in every situation where the temptation comes by the misuse of our instincts? You understand what I'm talking about? What happens to our joy and peace when we fo focus on what others are doing or not doing instead of concentrating on what we ought to be doing or not doing? How much time do we waste focusing on things we can't do anything about? How many of y'all believe that if God forgives somebody, it's a done deal? And then how many of us are still harboring grudges and seeking revenge on somebody that God has forgiven because of the whatabouts and the yeah buts and the ebonies and you don't understand what they did. And we're looking at it when we say we, you don't understand what they did, we're looking at it in the flesh instead of in the spiritual realm. And we're not seeing the source of power that worked through them and they that hurt us. And a lot of people don't look at the source of power that worked through us that were used to hurt other people or harm other people. So how much wiser would we be if we spent our time concentrating on what we ought to be doing or not doing? I mean, y'all believe that old Kenny Rogers sang a song. He said, you got to know when to hold. You got to know when to fold. You got to know when to walk. And sometimes you got to flee the scene when the temptation gets too hot. You understand what I'm talking about? So it takes discipline to do all this stuff. It takes self-restraint and it takes self-control. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask God to grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change. Ask God to give us the courage to change the things we can. And ask God to give us wisdom to know the difference between the things we can do something about and the things we can't do something about. And we're going to summarize it with thy will. Not mine be done. How I many of y'all won't believe when you're misusing your God-given instincts, you're running on self-will? And I, li I believe this. Any life or on self-will could hardly be a success. On that basis, running on self-will, we're almost in collision with something or somebody. But you know what really collides in us? The instincts inside me collide with the instincts inside you. And no peace to be had. So... Hopefully this presentation will be good enough to put on YouTube. And if y'all want to, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Living Branches, Method of the Coaches. Look for our symbol. That's Living Branches, Method of the Coaches. And look for our symbol. And we appreciate your prayers and support. This is who we are. Thank you for being here with us tonight. God bless you. And we'll see you next time we look at you.